working in Idaho. For oh, didn't you? Oh. On a lookout. Oh. Where did you work on a lookout? <laughs> I worked on a lookout at Mount Rainier National Park. Okay. okay. Very good. Go. <laughs> okay. You want me to start there? Start there. Okay. What year was this? This was in 1938. I was a sophomore at the forestry school in Seattle University. Needed to make some money, so I took the lookout job for one summer. When did you start? What time of year did that lookout open? Oh, that didn't open until just before the 4th. But I was working down on the lower parts of the district. That's the Carbon River District. My lookout was on. And they kept me busy doing jobs, odd jobs around the district until it was time to go up to the lookout. Did you receive any training in order to be a lookout? Nope. None. None needed. It isn't that complicated. <laughs> well, how about the firefinder? Is that hard to... No. It's not hard to do? Oh. This looks complicated. Oh. It's that cinch. Oh. It's your ability to judge distance. Oh. There's no way you can train for that and stand on a lookout. Yeah. Very well said. Uh, interesting experiences while you were up there. There is, since we had no fires, the park very seldom does, and I don't recall a fire within my range of vision that showed up. So I had no really exciting experiences except right below the lookout, must have been a oh, thousand feet away, was a nice lake. And the visitors to the park would come up there and go swimming. And so I could watch from the side of the lookout and see all of the activity down there, and some of it was quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Is it my understanding that you were also able to watch the baseball games? Yes, as you look north from my lookout, Ptolemy Peak was on the north side of the mountain. And as you look to the north from the lookout, you could see Seattle and Puget Sound. And at night, when they had their baseball games and turned the lights on, and I could listen to the game on my radio, I could get the play-by-play -play detail and see the activity going on with my binoculars. Other than watching the ball games, did you have any other outstanding experience while you were up? No, it's really fairly routine. In the park, you get far more visitors than Ben would get in a Forest Service lookout. So there were people continually dropping up. I had a nice field of huckleberry between the lake and the lookout. And every time I'd go down there in the evening and try to pick it, I would have to compete with about two bears, two or three bears, to get huckleberries off the bushes. But they didn't seem to mind me, so we got along quite well together. How much money a month did you make, do you recall? I can't tell you that. I just don't recall. Was it nearly enough for your tuition? It must have been around 150 bucks a month. Did you have pets? No pets. No pets? Except the deer and the bear. Could you cook before you went up there? No, I wouldn't say I could cook. And I can't cook yet. At least my wife oh. tells me. It's but terrible, you, so you could feed yourself at least. It was no problem. Oh. Most of the stuff you buy, you start off with a ham. It's already cooked. All you got to do is slice it. Yeah. And then you go to canned goods once that's gone. <laughs> How far away was your water source? The water source was the Lake Palomi. And how heavy did that backpack? Since people slamming that all the time. <laughs> yeah. How heavy did that backpack? Well, it was a five-gallon backpack. Uh, how heavy did that get by the time you got back to the lookout? Oh, it wasn't bad. Were you on a tower or in a cabin on the ground? It was neither. It was a two-story lookout, and the under part of it was where you stored your wood, kept your supplies, and there was a propane tank down there that they recharged every spring. Like, unlike Ben, I didn't have to rely on a ground telephone line, although we had one. We had shortwave radio to the home station. So it was kind of a luxury setup compared to what yeah. some of the Forest Service were. Uh, you had a lot of visitors that walked in or not? No, they would walk up from the lake. They'd 
see the lookout up there, and me looking down at them, and they'd come up and visit for a while. If you had a chance to do it again, would you spend a summer on a lookout? Not now, but there was times I would have. So it was an enjoyable experience. I don't want to do it again yeah. now, but they don't man lookouts anymore, so there's not much chance of that happening. Any other thoughts in passing about the lookout business? No. That, I thought, was pretty much a waste of time for the Forest Service, I mean the Park Service, because they had essentially a fireproof forest up there, particularly the north side of that mountain. But just as soon as air patrol came out, they dropped the many of their lookouts, but unlike Forest Service, they haven't torn them down. They're still up there. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate the interview. Your words.